Good morning, gardeners, farmers, homesteaders, and friends. So, spring's here. We got weeds. We got geese. We got wind. We got hail. <laughs> All the normings, normal trappings of spring. Okay, that's enough. What? What? Also, uh, it means we got pests now. And not just geese. But I mean real pests. On our beans, we got, let's see if you can see this, black aphids. All those little, they look like dirt, but they're little black aphids. The first sign you can tell is that you're gonna have beans that have yellow edges like this, new ones. And they're just sucking the, sucking the sap out of the plants, see, here. Right. You know, here's, here's a good case. You can also tell because you will start having ladybugs pop up. And when you start seeing ladybugs, they're eating those aphids, which is great. But I would need about a billion ladybugs because this is a lot of beans. Um, so we're gonna do a little phased approach here. Um, pests are a fact of life. It's funny, when you start gardening, you think there's nothing worse than weeds. And then your pest population gets out of control. <laughs> um, so we have to deal with all of this, right? So I want to talk to you about how to manage that uh, problem to actually manage it and to not be in constant firefighting mode. And uh, to do that, we are going to use a bunch of products. Um, they're pretty democratizable, but uh, you know, should be easy to find. So when I was a young man, I used to think that you know permaculture and organic gardening uh, was about trying to restore the Garden of Eden, for lack of a better you know analogy, and that is a place where all you must do is walk and pick and eat. That's not really reasonable, unless all you like eating are like, you know, tree fruits in the tropics. But uh, even there, they, you know, getting that established uh, is decades of work, hard work. And it isn't as, uh, as turnkey as we'd like. If you're trying to grow annual crops, or if you're trying to grow a garden, uh, that's not available to you at all. And in reality, uh, you are creating an environment that will encourage certain pests and encourage certain weeds to proliferate. In the same way that we pamper our plants and we feed the soil, the weeds will take just as much advantage of that. In fact, probably even more. The bugs will take just as much advantage of that. Uh, so I didn't catch it fast enough and I have a bit of an aphid problem. So I'm going to take some immediate actions with, uh, with this, it's Castile soap. This is just soap, you can buy this, all of this you can buy on Amazon, I think. Um, but uh, uh, you can, it's, so I'm just gonna spray soapy water on them. And when soapy water gets in contact with them, the water will evaporate and the soap will then dry and it'll uh it'll turn into this like and you can try this out you can you know measure it with like a tablespoon and like don't wash the tablespoon out just like let it sit and it'll turn resinous like as it desiccates it'll turn resinous uh and so that just like just kills the bugs uh but otherwise it's totally safe and i like this cause it's got no fragrance it's got no extra stuff i mean it has some carrier oil you know, hemp, hemp oil, or whatever, uh, in it, but uh, it's still totally fine for use. But really, what the trick to good pest management is the same thing we do with weeding. It is get a program together and do it every week. <laughs> you know, it's just that simple. Um, so we're going to be applying a uh, a variety of bacteria, really, and well, neem oil. 
a, a variety of products every week, right? So we're gonna start with soap. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna use, uh, can't see it, spinosad here. We're gonna, we're gonna rock some spinosad. Uh, so that's week two. Week three is neem oil. Week four is BT. Um, but basically, like, this works by like the bacteria. We'll, we'll create a proliferation of bacteria that are hostile to the pests that we want to get rid of. And, uh, and that, that's, how we'll, that's how we'll control them. We'll, it will, it will, we will introduce a bacterial species that is inhospitable for the pests. And that's our primary way. And we're going to continue to keep those populations up by rotating this through every, every week. So every month, there will be one application, you know, roughly every month, one application of one of these sprays, or of, of each of these sprays. And, uh, uh, and it's, you know, it's pretty lightweight. Most of these are like a tablespoon or two per gallon. My crop field takes about two gallons to run. So, you know, you can do the math. This will last uh, a good long time, probably most of your growing season, if you're in short growing season climates, uh, like we are down here. Let's, uh, you know, pitter patter, let's get at her. Okay, so the application rates are, uh, it's just two and a half tablespoons per two quarts, five tablespoons per gallon. This is a half gallon jug, so I may have to do two of these, but. Two, and we could do two and a half. Oh. That's the other nice thing about uh, organic control is uh, mix up a little, just pour it in the grass. So we're gonna try and do this as smooth as possible. Mmm, smells good actually. It smells clean. Mmm. You know, it's nice when your pest control smells like, uh, like a fresh cleaned hotel room, you know, just like pleasant and minty and, and all that. Let's get a little more. Okay, and then we just will hold back the plants. Spray them. Okay, so if you thought that was a little tedious for something that big, I agree with you. So uh, it's my birthday, by the way, <laughs> or probably will be around this time. And I got a fancy backpack sprayer. Boom! Found a reseller on Amazon who was basically—they must have been stolen. They were so cheap. Um, so I picked this up. Battery-operated sprayer. Got the little on-the-ground attachment, so you can go. And uh, yeah gonna go do that. Hopefully it is much easier.
You know, this is pretty fun. <laughs> So you can get underneath the pedals, which is what's pretty cool with this attachment. Just kind of get underneath, spray where all the aphids are. It's nice. It's on the lowest setting too, and it's just perfect for this. A little soapy water. Um, you know, as you go out and look in that garden, those beans are pretty beat up. Uh, we're looking right now at a pretty substantial crop loss. Um, I think I was able to catch it in time. Uh, you know, it's now the evening, right? I did that spray in the morning, like 7 a.m. <laughs> you know, now it's 7 p.m., right? Uh, so you can go, you can see the effect, it's pretty good, probably, probably a huge dieback. Uh, but more are going to come, and the plants are pretty weakened for it. So this is the one case where I'll use drip irrigation, or drip fertilizer. Um, and I can kind of tell you why. Uh, so I use like a combination of liquid fish and like humic acid. Um, And I do this, well, okay. When you drip fertilize organic stuff, you're feeding the soil microbes, not the plants. If you drip feed like, you know, pretty synthetic stuff, right? If you, if you drip the synthetic stuff, it'll, the so sodium based, it'll actually force the plants to soak it up. Um, so I kind of prefer to mix this stuff in. And my thoughts are, uh, these are not as readily available as chemical fertilizer. Um, but what I am doing is giving a whole bunch of ready-to-eat food for bacteria and a bunch of bacteria. <laughs> so the combination of that will kind of jumpstart a garden. Uh, I've had really good success with this before um, in situations like this, so that's kind of my stuff. I think you could use any humic acid. Uh, and you could use any fish emulsion or, or liquid kelp or whatever, just something. And uh, probably only gonna do it once, unless, you know, if I have a catastrophe at this point, it's gonna set the crop back, right? So it's just at this magic point before you have a lot of growth um, that you can catch up. If, if you have, you know, like, let's say we get a bunch of grasshoppers or something, and you know, you're really not gonna get the, uh, uh, you're really not going to ever come back from that, you know. Crops are lost. Just pick what you can. But uh, but when it's little like this, they they can bounce back. So that's what we're going for. All right, I'm going to mix on the Jeep because uh, it's just where I am. <laughs> let me let me set you up here. All right. Uh, there's not much in this, so I'm probably just going to use it all. Yeah, there's only a couple tablespoons. What I'll do is I'll mix some tap water in there. Or not tap water, but... Okay, and in this one, I'm looking for about maybe two cups. Just kind of eyeballing it. About like that. Okay. That's the only nice thing about organic fertilizer is you kind of can't go wrong. So next we're going to fill this chamber all the way up with water. Uh, I'll just cut to that. I'm going to rinse it in here. Got it hooked up. Um, the way you do this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I've got both of them off water on, black line on, that's going to fill the tank. You can start to see here the pressure building up. 
All right, I'm gonna turn it on, see what we got. There we go, nice, nice good stream. All right, took a second, <laughs> but it got there. So we're gonna run this until it runs clear, basically. It shouldn't take more than, you know, 30 minutes or so. I got a little leak in my filter regulator combo. So let me, I can just like flick a bunch of these off in my hands. They're mostly dead. You know? Like they're mostly dead. So I think we're kinda, kinda okay. You know, even these, these huge, big, ugly spots, it's probably impossible for the camera to tell. There's very little movement. Like maybe, you know, maybe a few of these are alive. Not many, most of them did not survive this opening. Um, but you can also see how much of a setback it was, so. This is the one time, like I said, that I think drip is worth doing. Most of the time, I think you're just kind of wasting your money. You're just kind of flushing it out. Um, and you're better off using pelletized. But, uh, yeah, these little, this little bug here, this little ladybug, was the first indicator that I had aphid problems. So I sure do look at all these curly leaves. You can see the soap residue. So it's not bad, not a bad dieback. Um, you're never gonna get them all, right? That's why we do it routinely. Well, there you go. That's how we deal with pests in the garden. Um, follow your cycle, alternate your bacteria, uh, alternate your oil. And there'll be more. <clears throat> As I'm picking weeds and looking through, I saw big green aphids. I saw cucumber beetle. So, you know, the earth is waking up and with it come the pests. Okay. Thanks for watching, friends. And uh, looks, like we're, looks like we're done. Wrap this up. Let it soak in. And that's that.